So uh, I'm going to go actually straight into my message. I'm not going to start with any jokes today. Sorry, you guys. Uh, <laughs> come on, you guys. Okay, so lately, uh, for a while now, uh, God's been uh, putting on my heart this one subject that, that I've been observing and I've been, uh, been learning more about the subject. And I just want to uh, share with you guys what I've learned so far. So if you guys, if you guys have your Bibles or if you have uh, the Bible app on your phone, if you guys can open with me to Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to the end. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So whenever I would read the Bible, I would always catch this one word, go. I would always read this word, God always said, go. What does that mean? So that I know all of us know the definition of go, but I'm just going to read it to refresh your memories. Go, move from one place or point to another. God called his disciples and he told them, He gave him a command. He gave a request. He said, hey, I need you guys to go and make disciples of all nations. All these years that I've been with you guys, all these years that I've taught you guys, that I've I've proven to you guys all these things that, that is right and wrong. I've showed you guys the difference between the black and the white. Therefore, as what I've done to you, you go and do to others. And throughout the Bible, you just see this word go from beginning to the end. From the beginning, Adam, God said, go and name all the animals. Noah, go and build a boat. And at this age for Noah, there was no such thing as a boat. He didn't know if a boat was supposed to fly in the sky, if it was supposed to have some off-road capabilities or driving capabilities. He didn't know if it was supposed to float on water. He didn't know if it was supposed to be a submarine. But what he did is he took action. He took action in what God said. When God said go, he went. Even though people made fun of what he did, he still went. Even though people made, mocked him, he still did what, what God told him to do. And you see, now to these days, we still use boats. The story of Moses. Moses uh, God told Moses, go to Pharaoh and deliver my people. And before this, uh, this ever happened, Moses lived in Egypt and, and one day he was just walking along and he saw a guard beating a slave. And right away, out of, out of just his natural instincts, he came and he started beating the guard and ended up killing the guard, but saved the sa- slave's life. And because of this, people started to hunt him down. So what he did is he ran away. For 40 years, Moses was hiding, but God finally came to him in the form of a burning bush and said, hey, it's time for you to go back because I hear the cries of my people. And even though he was scared, he didn't know what people were going to want to do to him. He didn't know if people wanted to even kill him still. He still, he took action in what God told him to do. God said go, so he went. And you see, he saved the entire nation of Israel. The story of Esther. She was told, go to the king and speak on the behalf of your people. And in this story, no one was allowed to go and visit the king's throne unless if the king requested someone, even the queen. So pretty much what she did is she risked her own life for all the other people. And you see, God was with her. She took action. She took that position where, hey, if I have an opportunity to do it, I will do it. If God tells me to go, I will go. So she went, and you know what she did? She did that, and she saved the entire, all her people, including her own life. Going all the way to Jesus, God told Jesus, go and be born as a human figure and pay all the ransom for my people. And you see, through all of these these examples that I've given you, God was pleased. God was happy with what happened because they took action. When he said, go, I have a calling for you. Go, I have something for you to do. I have somewhere for you to go. And when they took that and they said, you know what, I'm going to go, God was pleased. God was happy with what happened. When God says go, he wants us 
to step out in faith. In the story of Peter, um, when, when Jesus' disciples, they went on a boat to cross the lake. And while they were crossing the lake, they, they encountered a storm. And in this storm, they were, they were trying to hang on for their dear lives to the boat. They were trying to stop the water from getting into the boat. And from a distance, they noticed what appeared to them as a ghost. But when this, this figure started coming closer, they realized that it was Jesus walking on water. And immediately, Peter said, Jesus, if it's truly you, tell me to come to you on top of the water. And that took faith. What he said and what he did, the, the faith that it took to go outside of the boat and to walk on water, it took faith. What he did is he took action. He took faith. What he did is now a story. And, and now what he did... People use this as examples, as sermons. People are touched by this. The word go is a command to action. When God calls us to go, and even in these stories, when God said go, it is a command. It's obviously our choice if we can decline the command or accept it. And in these stories, you see, if these people declined this command that God has given them, then I wouldn't even be preaching on this subject. You wouldn't hear these stories of people uh, building boats and stuff that we use to these days where people are saving nations. You wouldn't hear stories like this if they, just li- if they didn't listen to what God said, then there would be no such thing. But because they did, we, we have stories. We have stuff to learn from the Bible. Amen? Uh, I, have this, uh, I have this picture in my room, and it says, um, it says go outside and do something you remember. And uh, I know this, is, this doesn't have that much to do but, uh, with what I'm speaking, but I'm going to just kind of twist it a little bit. When God says, God says, go outside and do something. Go outside of your comfort zone. Go outside, take action. Go outside and move. Move away from the spot where you feel comfortable. <laughs> do something that you remember. Um, uh, I, I don't really know the story. I, I'm just saying the story because this, it happens. Uh, people say this a lot. And... A long time ago, um, some of uh, the leaders here at the church, they were playing soccer, and back then they pretty much knew no English. And uh, this guy was walking along, I don't know exactly how it goes, but uh, this guy named Edder was walking along, and they invited him to play soccer with them, and he also barely knew any English as well. But you see now, Edder, at our church, and even outside of this church, this guy, he's a walking testimony. This guy, you see what he does? He has passion in what he does. And, and that was because our guys, they invited him. Just be, the, the smallest little opportunity, someone was walking along and he's like, hey, just come play soccer with us. And you see where this guy is now. This guy, he is something that you want to look up to. Going requires movement in the direction you are sent. When God tells us to go, he says, hey, there's a direction where I need you to go. There's someone in some place that, that need help. Hey, I need you to go over there. I'm sending you. I'm sending you the coordinates right now. I need you to go because someone is in need. There's someone that's in help. Maybe it's someone that's in our school or maybe there's someone that's in our work. Maybe these people are even the happiest people that you see. These people are the class clowns. They're always funny. They're always cracking jokes. But some of those people, they're deep inside. They're hiding depression. They're hiding suicidal thoughts. They're hiding abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse. You see, God has called us. God has called us to go because you don't know who is struggling. You don't know who is on the end of their life. Come on, you guys. Amen. Wow, that was really weak. (laughs) To grow in the relationship with Jesus Christ, you must move. You must move in life. You can't just always stay in your comfort zone. For example, if you have a car, but you never use that car, if you never move that car, what's the point of having that car? The only way, if that car is useful to you, if if you take the gear lever and you put it into first gear and you start moving. And same thing, and it's kind of the same concept with life. It's kind of pointless if we're just standing in one spot. We're always standing in our comfort zone. But until we put our life into the gear, and start moving. That's when God has the opportunity to use us, to use us in, in the glorious ways. Amen? Point two, it's time to move. 
And uh, again, I want you guys to open your, your Bibles or your phones to Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. And uh, this, this story is actually uh, the very first healing that happened after the ascent of Jesus Christ. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in a three o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man lame from birth was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could beg from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at them, at, looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any money or silver, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up, walk. Peter took the lame man by the right hand, then helping him up. As he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realized he was a lame beggar, they had seen so often at the gate beautiful, they were absolutely astounded. So the first thing that I caught my attention is when Peter said, you are healed, the man wasn't healed. It was only when Peter picked him up, grabbed him by the arm and picked him up. When there was movement, that's when the healing took place. When Peter said, you are healed, that didn't, it didn't happen. The, the healing happened when movement was taking place. The healing happened when Peter took him by the right arm and picked him up. Then it says instantly his ankles and his feet were restored. Peter said you are healed. And something, something that I hear a lot is when people say, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a millionaire. But there's no action behind your words. It's dead. But in this story... Peter said, you are healed, but nothing happened. But he backed, up of his, he backed up his words with action. He picked him up, and then after he picked him up, after there was movement, then the man was healed. After, after all this, after all what God taught them, you see that the movement of God just started spreading like wildfire throughout this entire world, and it's still happening to this day. Take action. A inch of movement will bring you closer to your goals than a mile of intentions. If, you, if your mouth is running at a million miles an hour saying, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that, I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm going to be a billionaire, I'm going to be a doctor, I want to be a lawyer, I'm going to be a CEO, I'm going to be a businessman. But if those words don't come with action, it's pointless even saying those words. Don't talk, act, don't say, show, don't promise, prove. In, instead of saying you want to be a millionaire, act like a millionaire. Start becoming more mature. Start walking like a bold person. Not like, obviously, if you're walking like this all depressed. Yes, you had, to, you had to straighten up your posture. You have to act like a millionaire. You have to act like a CEO. You have to act like a mentor. You have to be someone that when people look at you, they see, wow, this person is actually, they want to grow. This person actually wants to grow. They want to become what they say. Don't say, show. Instead of saying, oh, th this, I want to do this, show it. Show your, ga uh, show your game plan from, the, from point A to point Z. Show everything. Come up with a plan. Because with God on our side, nothing is impossible. And prove. Prove people, hey, when you reach the top, say, hey, look, look at where I've come from and look at where I am now. You prove your point. You prove people. When people say, oh, you can't actually do this, you prove them wrong. Instead of promising, just watch, I'll do it. Just say, when you get to the top, say, hey, look, look at where I am now. Look at what I have. Come on, you guys. Amen? <laughs> when you grow, you know. And 
when, when you grow to a certain uh, part of your relationship with Jesus Christ, you, you get to the point where you start knowing when God doesn't have to tell you to go. You already know, hey, I have an opportunity. The story of David. When David came to Goliath, he already knew he had a relationship with Jesus Christ where he knew God didn't even have to tell him, hey, I have an opportunity for you. Go and fight Goliath. He already knew, hey, I trust God. I'm going to take action right now. I'm going to go and I'm going to believe in my faith. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust what, what my relationship is based on. And he went and he defeated Goliath. Where is God calling you to go? It could be as simple as doing your bed. I've seen, uh, I've seen people on, on Snapchat. Uh, people, uh, there's one person that they always post a picture of, of themselves on the mirror. In the background, you see like their bed. And their bed is disgusting. They never do their bed. And their clothes is laying around everywhere. And that's something that's so unattractive. Maybe God is calling you, hey, maybe it's time to start doing your bed. Uh, for me personally, I can't go to sleep in a messy room. I, it's something that it bothers me so much, I have a hard time going to sleep. For me, I like to clean my room in the morning. If I have clothes laying around or shoes or I have just a mess going, I like to clean my room in the morning because I know at the end of the day, after work, after everything goes on, I'm gonna be tired and it's gonna feel so good when I come to my room to a clean room, a nicely done made bed. And that's something, it's so satisfying for me. I just love when I walk in, I just smile. I look at my bed, I'm like, yes. I have like a four inch memory foam on my bed. Oh, perfect. It's amazing. Maybe God has called you to go apologize to someone. Maybe, uh, maybe you offended someone or you hurt someone's feelings or maybe the other way around, someone has hurt your feelings. You know what, be the first one to apologize. God has called us to go. Go apologize to someone. Go apologize to someone that, that you hurt or someone hurt you. Go ask your parents if they need help with anything. And, and for this, you don't even have to go and ask because you don't, you don't have to have permission to go clean the dishes. You don't have to have permission to go vacuum the floor. Just go do it. Just do stuff because um, I recently just got a job and, and now I feel the same, uh, same thing that my parents feel. When they come from work, they're super, it's super tiring. It's super, you're like tired. You want to go to sleep and you just still have a whole bunch of other stuff to do. And you have this feeling where it's like, I don't want to do this. And for people who, who are still that, they stay home and they don't have a job yet. Just, just do those things for your parents. Just go clean the house. Go make everything spotless. It's not that hard. It probably take at least 30 minutes to do everything clean the bathroom, clean their own room as well, do the laundry. Go help, mini, uh, go help uh, kids ministry. Maybe uh, for me, I, uh, for a long time ago, I didn't really like kids because there there, a lot of them were annoying, for me at least. And I started to realize that my mom was like, she would always talk to me and, and be like, you know, you were worse than the kids at Sunday school. You were probably the one of the worst ones. I was so disobedient and it opened my eyes to maybe I can mentor those kids as well or maybe I can teach them at least a little bit of something from what my parents taught me to what my mentors taught me to what my pastors taught me. God has called us to go. Go and do some witnessing. For me, to go and witness, when we first started witnessing, it was so uncomfortable for me because I've never done it before. So for me to do it, I was stepping out of my comfort zone big time. But after I started getting used to it, you started to, you start seeing God moving. After you get out of your comfort zone, for me, after I got out of my comfort zone, I started the healings taking place through these, through my own hands. But it wasn't me that was healing, it was God using me, God putting his power through me onto another person. Go and be free. Some of us, we're just living a, such a stressful life. We just always want to be on top of our game, having two, three jobs at the same time. And you're just getting so stressful. At the end of the day, every single day, you're just on survival mode. Whenever you come home, you're just dead tired. And the first thing you want to do is you want to go to sleep. And then you wake up and you just keep on living the same life. God wants us to be free. Practice your freedom. God wants us to live a fun life. God wants us just because uh, all these new commandments that God has given us, all these things that, all these rules that we have to listen to, God still wants us to have fun. Those are just, 
the the difference between black and white all the commandments there's just telling you this is black and this is white this is what you should do and this is what you shouldn't do what God what has God called you to thank do thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come